down the lonely goomba. Stop it with two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. Hey up chaps, well, it's been a while, but I think it's time we finally play Sonic Advance 3 and end this Sonic Marathon once and for all. It's gone on way too long if you ask me, so uh, let's check it out and get this over with. Wait a minute, did that bush just move? Uh, I've never seen it do that before. Hello. Oh, uh, there's a man in my bush. Well, I didn't think I'd be saying that today. Not just any man, my good sir. Flandrew from the YouTube channel. Um, Flandrew. Okay, but do you have a permit to be in my bush? Um, no, but I was wondering if I could interest you in the good word of Shrek. Ah, oh, here we go. Can we not go one bleeding day without someone trying to convert me to Shrek? I'm sick of it. Okay, look, hear me out. Did you know that there are actually nine Shrek games for the Game Boy alone. Will you leave me alone if I play them all? Yes. That's a good enough reason for me. Uh, let's go. So, first up, we have Shrek Fairy Tale Freak Down on the Game Boy Color. It's interesting how the language select screen has an option for English and American. Like what? Do they just remove all the letter U's? I mean, the menu is looking pretty creepy too. Everything just looks off. The way Shrek is just up there looking around, uh, it gives me the creeps. Even the character select screen's freaking me out a little bit. I mean, I don't like how that wolf's looking at me. Yeah, it gives me the creeps too, especially considering this was chronologically the first Shrek tie-in game ever, and they just decided to make a Mortal Kombat clone. That's like having the very first Toy Story game being a Doom clone. It's definitely a bold move. Hey, with any luck, we might get to see Shrek do an uppercut fatality. So, the first fight is Shrek vs. Rat Creep. Oh, Shrek looks like he's seen some shit, man. The game itself, and well, it ain't great. It controls like ass, it's slow, it's clunky, unresponsive. I mean, frankly, it's probably the worst feeling fighting game I've ever played. The fights are either easily won by spamming one attack, or the AI becomes a pro fighter overnight and makes a right mug of you. It's very inconsistent. Yeah, it really does hurt the ego when you get your ass beat by a gingerbread man in a game made for children. But to be fair, the game is kind of difficult at times. If the CPU has a projectile attack, they tend to just spam that endlessly, which is a real ball ache. And ultimately, the game does just come down to cheap spammy tactics. But for a big ogre, Shrek is surprisingly spry. Look, he can even do a full WWE dropkick. Oh, and of course, the trademark fart. I have a feeling we'll be seeing a lot of farts in these Shrek games. So look forward to that. But in regards to the moves, that's basically it. <sighs> you call yourself a Shrek master, yet you don't even know about the advanced button inputs in Fairy Tale Freak Down? For shame. Any true Shrek fan would know that the game does actually have button combinations for special attacks. And then right, there's even special abilities you can unlock too, which I'm pretty sure no one in the history of gaming has ever done. But say if you press back, down, forward, A, and then B quickly, you will get a strength boost. Why, with this sacred knowledge, you'll be the best fairy tale freak down player in no time. It's only a matter of time until the fairy tale freak down competitive scene gets the recognition it deserves. But anyway, you play through the game, beating up people as you'd expect. The fights somewhat follow the structure of the first movie. You go to the castle, then fight the dragon, who kind of looks like a Gen 1 Pokemon sprite, by the way. And then you go back and beat up Lord Farquaad. That's pretty much what happens in Shrek, right? Only I don't remember Shrek fighting himself in the movie. Twice, no less. I don't know, maybe it's a metaphor or something. You know, like he's fighting his inner demons. I'm sure we can all relate to that. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. So anyway, we beat the game in like 10 minutes and you get a single ending screen and that's it. I talk about buyer's remorse. To be fair, you can play through the game with different characters though. My favourite being the loneliest of course, but still, it's mostly the same. Some fights are different, I mean you get to fight Fiona here for instance which is new, but that's about it. I guess Shrek didn't want to punch his future wife in the face. So yeah, I'm not being hyperbolic. This game is awful. If I was to say one good thing, the visuals of the stage select screen look kind of nice. And I suppose there's a decent roster of fighters and maybe a song with friends, I don't know. But that's being generous. Um, it doesn't support multiplayer. What the hell's with it then? Next game, show me what you got. Well, in that case, maybe I can interest you in Shrek Hassle at the Castle. 
You see, it rhymes only if you speak in an American accent. So this game was actually developed by the same team who made the Legend of Starfy games. You like Legend of Starfy, right? It's alright, I suppose. Well then, you love this. Hold up, what's going on with this box art? Well, what, if it gets stung by a bee or something? Why the head's so swollen? Fiona's neck looks like it's gonna snap under that weight. I mean, that ain't right. This one is actually pretty decent as far as Game Boy Advance platformers go. The visuals are pretty nice, giant heads aside, and the gameplay is pretty simple and easy to grasp. You basically just walk forward and punch things in the face. What's not to like? I mean, it's alright, but the more you play it, the more the cracks start to show. Half of my deaths, I just feel like I walk off the edge by mistake. See, the problem is, you can't jump whilst punching, but you need to hold down the punch button to run, and you need to run to make the jumps, so your punch Press jump and walk off the edge and die. And to chop it off, the levels barely have any checkpoints, if any. True, it also doesn't help that the game loves having time attack challenges. And it's also obsessed with making you rush through levels. I've got to say, having no checkpoints mixed with unreliable controls and constant time limits isn't the most enjoyable combination. But it's really nice to see Donkey just following you around, even to his death. Now that's what you call a true friend. That's what I call a moron. And the thing is right, the game gets stupid hard. The IGN review over here compares it to Super Goose and Ghost. Like what the hell? I mean this level has you running away from a dragon, dodging fire, doing platforming, awkwardly climbing these chains, all whilst within a time limit. And again, no checkpoints. It's one of the hardest things I've played on this channel, and it's a bleeding Shrek game. Okay, but this next level is a nice change of pace, although it's barely a level at all actually. You just mash the A button to sing until the bird blows up. And if you do fail for some reason Fiona just falls to the floor looking very distraught that she didn't blow up the poor little bird. Also at this point you can actually play as her for the rest of the game too, although we're right near the end so it hardly matters. Yeah so we're making it to the final level and it's tough, it's super long and again there's a time limit and to top it off you have to fight two bosses. Like I mean it might not look difficult but this is a gauntlet and you only have so much health so it doesn't help that the game keeps throwing in cheap hits that you can't see coming. I'm kind of ashamed how long this level took me, but we made it to the final boss. And it's the legend himself, the Lonelius. Yeah, but he doesn't put up much of a fight though. Ah, easily exploitable boss patterns. Where would I be without you? So we then get to fight Farquaad, and ironically he's probably the only character in this game that looks proportionate. But he only takes about three hits and then he's done. The game then ends with some real crusty stills from the movie that look nothing like the visuals for the rest of the game. I'd say that's a pretty solid ending. So yeah, let's hassle at the castle. It ain't bad, the combat is kind of fun, and the bosses are enjoyable too. It's just when the game tries to do platforming, it just all falls apart. It has elements of a good game, but no, it's not great. You can't have a platform game that doesn't feel good to control really, but still, you can't deny that there's some fun to be had. Right, what's next then? Let's see, uh, ah, Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway, the obligatory mascot kart racing game. And of course, the game is blatantly going for the Mario Kart thing, only this time every track feels greasier than pizza from Marty's Takeaway. I'm sorry Marty, but your pizza is uh, not great. And what's going on with this title screen? Surely, the whole point of a title screen is to show the title of the game, right? That logo's so pixelated, I, I can barely read it. Shrek doesn't seem to mind though, what's he so happy about? He should be more like Fiona, I mean look at her, that's the face of a woman who's dead inside. Also why is this game so loud, why are the colours so bright, everything here is a sensory overload, it's just too much. I've never been more grateful for the volume slider on my Game Boy. Dude this music, uh, it's just a bunch of beeps and shit, I'm pretty sure there's only 4 music tracks in the entire game too. You got a fine selection of uh, annoying beeps, or slightly different annoying beeps, the choice is yours. You know I'm pretty sure they just play the soundtrack of this game on loop, and then use that to torture Al Qaeda prisoners back in the day. And these circuits, half of them have nothing to do with Shrek. Really? A Christmas stage? Of course, because what's more Christmas than Shrek? Talking about generic, what's going on with these items? Half of them don't even make sense. Thumbs up? What's a thumbs up item do? No, no really, take a guess. Um, it gives you positive reinforcement. You know, good job Shrek, keep it up. Nope. 
It's the lightning from Mario Kart. Obviously, why are you stupid? Well, the lightning from Mario Kart, if it was as common as a banana peel. Sometimes I swear you'll spend the entire race shrunken. Uh, it's relentless. Yeah, I've got to admit, in general, this game is remarkably bad. The controls themselves feel spongy, the drifting and the boosting is near impossible to control, and the collision, dear lord, the collision. It's unbelievable. Yeah, to be honest, overtaking people in this game is a nightmare. You can pretty much never do it. If you go wide, you'll hit a wall, but if you try to squeeze past them, you'll bump into them, which completely kills your speed. You'll spend most of the game just hearing bye bye as you bump into everyone. Painful. And to top it off, the game just uh, loved slapping obstacles on the track, which is the same colour as the road. So you got that to worry about too, I mean you can barely even see the buggers. The AI doesn't seem to make any sense either, I mean I've heard of rubber banding but I've never seen it done to this extent, and it's weirdly inconsistent as well, sometimes the AI will put up no challenge whatsoever, and then other times it's just impossible to catch up to, and all of this feels completely unintentional too. You're not wrong, this race for example took me like 20 times it's completely busted meanwhile next race i'm basically lapping people the game has no difficulty curve at all well besides your final level and dear god this is impossible I swear, combined with shitty controls, the worst collision you've ever seen, and never votes, I mean, my god, it's torture. Look, even if you are doing well, there's a pretty high chance that you'll just end up getting stuck in a wall anyway, and by that point, you might as well restart the entire race. It also doesn't help that the dragon is just there, watching you, from a distance getting some kind of a sick pleasure from your suffering. I mean honestly, you know me, I, I tend to finish games on this channel, even the worst games, but I can't do this, I don't think anyone can do this. I'm looking online to see if anyone's done it, but all the videos just use cheats or save states, I'm telling you, it's not possible. I spent like fucking hours on this race, it, it ain't happening. Shrek Swamp Card Speedway has defeated me, the shame. I just hope the next game's better. Well you're in for a treat because next we have Shrek Wreaking Havoc, which is a sequel to Shrek Hassle in the Castle, and this game was actually released before Shrek 2 so it has a <clears throat> original story. Ok I suppose it shares some similarities with the Shrek 4D ride, but barely. And since there is no movie to ground them, the developers really went off the rails here. You've got bees with spears, rabbits with shades, eggs with legs. Eggs with legs? Yes, you heard me, eggs with legs. Crikey. But yeah, man this game is so much better than Hassle in the Castle. It's gotta be one of the best sequels of all time honestly. We completely scrapped the wonky platforming elements, instead focusing on the combat and exploration. And it works, it's simple, but it feels good. Heck, the visuals and music are amazing too, you know, giant heads aside. The game just has a ton of polish. It's kinda weird that they put so much effort into it actually, considering it's a weird obscure Shrek game. I think the only person I've seen mention it is, uh, me, eight years ago. So basically the gist of the game is that the ghost of Lord Farquaad has possessed everyone and you need to save them by beating them up. And people say violence is never the answer. Well this game says otherwise, at least that's the excuse the developers give you for making you beat the utter crap out of your favourite bedtime story characters. Look you pummel Pinocchio so bad he turns back into a real boy. His dream finally came true, that's the power of the fist. So yeah, the game is basically explore, beat things up and get to the end. But there is an incentive to explore. See, there's bosses, hidden characters to rescue and buffs to collect. So it is worthwhile and all this goes towards your ranking at the end of the stage. If you uh, care about that sure at least one person cares. The levels and environments are also pretty nice, I mean you've got your standard stuff like a forest but then you also have a candy town with little candy houses and candy shops and a fully working candy sewage system. And to top it all off you finally get to knock Humpty Dumpty off the wall. Well Humpty Dumpty if he joined the insane clown posse. Really though, the bosses in this game are great. Just the right difficulty where you need to pay attention but not too much that you need to try too hard you know. There's a good variety too. Yeah, you got evil grandmas, and bad magicians, Peter Pan Shadow and the legend himself of the loneliest. 
And don't forget the giant who's got a bit of the uh, PS1 Hagrid vibe about him. Well, if Hagrid had a giant bulbous belly button. It's uh, kind of gross actually. Well, I just hope that's his belly button and not something else sticking up from his pants, you know? Why do you have to say that? So yeah, we make it to the final level and this is pretty epic. Yeah, start off in a castle, but the final area is the spooky graveyard. It has a good atmosphere and frankly, it really feels like how a final level should. And now, it's time for the final boss, Lord Farquaad himself, in ghost form. And it's really quite difficult, there's like some Dr. Wily shit going on here. He's teleporting around, he's shooting shit, the only thing's missing is a UFO. But with enough practice, you'll probably eventually do it. And that's it, you get an overall rank at the end of the game, which is pretty harsh, and you can replay the game with any character you want, but honestly, despite being a really good game, it's a one and done kind of thing. Still, this is easily the best Shrek game so far. So how many Shrek games do we have left? Surely we're near the end now. Actually Goomba, we're not even halfway done. Why did I agree to do this again? Um, YouTube views? Yeah, probably. Okay, then next up we have Shrek 2 for the Game Boy Advance. So this one was published by Activision and developed by Vicurious Visions. You know, the same developers as the Crash Bandicoot handheld games. That's right, we've got the big boys involved now. Well, the game makes a solid first impression. It's one of those puzzle games where each character has their own unique abilities and you've got a swap between them to solve puzzles. There's a decent roster of characters too, which you unlock as the game progresses, so there is an attempt to keep things fresh. Okay, so Shrek can carry objects, Donkey can jump higher and kick things, Puss can climb walls and slide down ropes, Human Shrek can reflect projectiles, and Jinji is a killing machine that cannot be stopped. So when you're swapping between characters and solving puzzles, it's a ton of fun, it's great stuff. But as the game goes on, the developers seem to lose focus, and the game shifts into a generic, mediocre platform game. Sometimes you are just play as a single character too. I mean, the platforming ain't great, the combat is super repetitive, and it's just not good. Like, at all. The game also becomes a little bit bullshitty too. I mean, the levels aren't super long or anything, but there's no checkpoints. And towards the later half of the game, everything just kills you in one hit. The spotlights, bottomless pits, these annoying enemies, it starts to wear you down. Well, either that or I'm just getting pretty tired of playing Shrek games. It's hard to tell at this point. Well, luckily for you, by the time the game gets to the fourth chapter, it completely forgets about Shrek and becomes a gingerbread man game, which continues for pretty much the rest of the game. Granted, he's fun to play as, but it does feel detached from everything else. I think someone just really wanted to have a gingy game and got carried away here. Luckily, the last few levels reel it back in, with some great puzzles and new character pair-ups allowing for some fresher puzzles. And the run up to the final boss is oddly intense, with brand new level themes, overbearing music and a pretty high difficulty level. It's good stuff. Like I say, the game is best when it's focusing on solving puzzles and the unique character dynamics. I just wish they did it more. Okay, but what about the bosses? They're good, right? Well, if you can call them bosses, I mean there's only two in the entire game. One is just post bouncing around like he's trapped in the game of Pong, and the other is just dodging the fairy godmother's attacks till the time runs out. So, uh, no. They're not good. But overall, the game is still decent. It's just a bit of a mixed bag. If it made a sequel and maybe focused on what worked, they would probably have a bit of a hidden gem. Okay, so what if I told you they made a sequel which released six months later and used the exact same engine, but it's now an action platform game which completely removes the puzzle aspect you actually liked. Sometimes I do feel like God personally hates me. And so he made Shrek 2 beg for mercy. A suitable title if I do say so myself. So, as you can probably tell from the box, this is a Puss and Boots game. They basically took Puss from the previous game and made an entire game around it. Personally, I would have preferred a Gingy game, but beggars can't be choosers. Weird thing to beg for if you ask me. What, you're begging for a Gingy game? That's a bit weird. Well, it's just a saying. But onto the game, and this serves as a prequel to Shrek 2 and explains how Puss met Shrek. You know, just in case you were losing sleep over that gap in the story. Although I doubt it's canon to the Shrek universe. Shrek canon is very important, you know. Well, luckily, they've made Puss better to play as. In the last game, he was weak and kinda shitty. Here, he can double jump, swing, row, dive, and do combos. Heck, he can even do that cute face from the movies. Well, 
At least, uh, I think he is. I mean, it's not quite as cute when it's 8 pixels. The thing is, you're never really incentivized to do any of these new attacks, so the combat quickly becomes like Shrek 2. Just spam attack until things die. They tried to get around this by having more enemy variety, but outside of these frogs, who seem impossible to kill without taking damage, they're mostly the same. But the real issue with the game is, despite being marketed as a Puss in Boots game, half of the game is just playing as Shrek and Donkey again. Only the level design is way worse than Shrek 2. Again, the puzzles take a backseat and you just have incredibly generic, borderline terrible levels where you just walk forward, punch and repeat. Only I think they made Shrek's punch worse so it doesn't even have that going for him. This game is quite bizarre honestly. It's like less than an hour long and half of it is just basically recycled content from the last game. And then there's the bus levels which are massive and quite well designed where you can tell all the effort went into but there's hardly any of them. It's like they made a puss game, realised it was 30 minutes long, so padded it out with leftovers from the last game. It's like DLC if the uh, DLC existed for the Game Boy. Still, I didn't hate my time with the game if I'm being honest, and there aren't any one hit kill annoying moments so uh, could be worse. I'd never pay money for this though, jeez. Basically daylight, robbery charging full price for this. But still, it's okay. Next game, please. Okay, remember when we played Shrek Fairy Tale Freakdown on the Game Boy Color? Ah, uh, yes, it, it feels like it was only yesterday. It was today. I have lost all sense of time. Well, as it turns out, they made another Shrek fighting game. Surely with the advancements and technology, they could make a good Shrek fighting game by now. After all, they've had four years to get it right. Well, the title screen's nice, but what's going on with the cutscenes? Why does Shrek look so low poly? Looks like it just came from Pokemon Rumble or something, but uh, the game itself, and uh, I mean, it's not bad. It's clearly going for a Smash Bros kind of thing, but I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm just punching things a few times and I win. Okay, so basically you've got to attack the other characters to fill up this special bar, and when it's full your attack will send someone flying and you'll get a point. You're right, it's very similar to Smash Bros, down to the items that spawn in random places on the stage. Really, the biggest issue I'm having is the stage design. It's just too convoluted and too big. Sometimes you can't even tell what's in the background or the foreground, it's just a complete mess. And was it really necessary to make the stages so huge? You can pretty much go an entire fight. And never see anyone if you wanted to. Yeah, it also doesn't help that the screen is so zoomed in, which means the field of view is tiny. You never really know where anyone is. Funny enough, it's actually a pretty viable strategy in 1v1, just get a few points in and then spend the rest of the game running away like a coward. They'll never catch you. You know, there's quite a lot of content here. I mean, there's a bunch of story campaigns for each character, there's unlockable fighters, and there's a challenge mode with a ton of missions to do. Only the game doesn't even keep track of which ones you've completed. So so, uh, yeah, good luck with that, but I don't know, I'm just kind of bored already. I mean, compared to Fairy Tale Freakdown, this is a masterpiece. The mechanics are decent, if not a little shallow, the controls are fine, but the level design is just awful. It brings the whole game down. Well, at least this game has multiplayer support this time, so it's got that going for it. Although, let's be honest, what are the chances that you're going to meet someone in person who also has a copy of Shrek Super Slam for the Game Boy Advance? But, Goomba old pal, the good news is we've made it to the home stretch now. Only two more Shrek games to go. I'm so sorry for putting you through this, I really am. You know, I think I'm ready to die now. Hold that thought, because up next is another Shrek racing game. Yeah, I heard there's a two for one sale on nooses at the Gap. Uh, I might check it out. Oh, come on, this one has to be better. I mean, it's physically impossible to be worse than Swamp Card Speedway. I think having shit thrown at your face would be better than last time, but fine. I'll check it out. Although I've got to admit, the presentation is pretty good. There's a huge roster too, which is nice. But how's the gameplay? Well, at least they scrapped the cards this time. Instead, you're riding on a big old monster. And who doesn't like that? Uh, you sure about that? Because zoomed out, I can barely tell what's actually going on here. I mean, if you didn't actually know this was a Shred game, it would be impossible to tell what the characters are because they're all so small. Alright, but uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm having a lot of fun with this. The track design is good, I like the controls, and there's a fantastic sense of speed. And to top it off, the items actually make sense this time. It's a huge improvement from, well, 
whatever this was. There's a ton of tracks too, and when you finish the game, you unlock a mirror mode, so there's quite a lot to do. Yes, but a lot of the tracks do look and play the same, so I'm not sure playing them in mirror mode is really going to keep your interest for that long. I don't know, maybe all the shitty Shrek games have just completely skewed my quality filter, but this is great. It just feels so good, even on the later tracks when it's narrow and there's no wars. I'm having no trouble at all. The only thing I don't like is that some of the tracks have obstacles on them and you can't really see them or have time to react. But that's only really an issue in like one or two tracks. I mean, there is a learning curve, but once you get it down, it's a ton of fun. I reckon this would be even better in multiplayer. Um, this game doesn't support multiplayer either. Well, to hell with it then. Next game. Okay, and lastly we have Shrek 3. And as you can probably tell by looking at it, it's a follow-up to Shrek 2 on the Game Boy Advance. It's got same mechanics and everything. You say that, but they nerfed Shrek anyway. Oh, you can barely jump now. It's all spongy and lacking in any oomph. It's like he's just giving up. Ah, oh, don't mind him, he just read the Shrek 3 movie review so he's feeling a bit depressed. Cut him some slack. The thing is, the game barely has anything to do with Shrek 3 anyway. I mean, you've got a bunch of Madagascar characters just knocking about, and barely any of the level themes resemble Shrek at all. Most of the levels are just on the beach, but there's barely any enemy variety too. You'll basically be fighting this single parrot for most of the game. Hey now, don't forget the sleepwalking gnomes. Make sure to punch them extra hard. That'll teach them to sleepwalk. If there's one thing I hate in this world, it's inconsiderate sleepwalkers. I, uh, don't know how to respond to that, but are the sleepwalking gnomes even in the movie? I mean, I don't remember, I have no idea. Well, as we said, the story doesn't really follow the movie. The entire game is just about Merlin trying to teleport us to far, far away and failing. You'll then need to collect fairies to try again and then you just repeat that until the end of the game. There's just nothing to it. I suppose the movie didn't exactly give them much to work with, but still, they stretched out a five minute scene from the movie to cover the entire game. Honestly, the whole game feels lazy and rushed. It's like it was cranked out in a few months. It, it just feels so cheap, man. But despite all that, and I hate to say it, I'm having a good time with it. The levels look nice, the puzzles are back, and they stripped all the bullshit moments and it's just a really chill experience. You can even play as King Arthur this time who can throw his shield, which Okay, it's kind of lame, but still, it is something. You know, you could probably swap these characters with someone else and no one would ever know this was a Shrek game. In fact, I'll bet money this was the case. This was probably a Madagascar Penguins game that they just decided to slap Shrek on at the last moment. You know what? Yeah, probably right. The last world's good though. It feels like that's where all the effort went into. It's the only part in the game which actually feels like it came from Shrek. I mean, there's more original assets here than the rest of the game combined. And it only lasts 10 minutes before we are to the final boss. And it's the only boss in the game. You know, I find it interesting how we've had three Shrek games in this style, and this is the first one to actually have a boss that uses the game's character swapping mechanic. It's like they finally figured it out at the last moment. Yeah, but it's still a bad boss. It doesn't even make sense. See, you use Shrek to pull these ropes to raise the bags, and then you swap the offer to hit the switch and drop the bags on Prince Charming. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yes, that does indeed make sense. But with each hit, the game gives you an extra bag with a different colour. But why? I thought maybe you need to use specific ones. But no, you can just use the same bag over and over again anyway. So the boss fight literally gets easier as it progresses. I mean, there's just no logic to it. Goomba, my friend, I can call you that, right? I think you might be giving a little too much thought to this. After all, the entire boss is built around a mechanic which is only ever used in the opening tutorial level and never again until now. I don't think the developers really put much thought into this, and neither should you. Yeah, true. Well, at least it had a final boss, I suppose. And that's Shrek 3. It's just a worse version of Shrek 2, really. I mean, there's less characters, less environments, enemies, bosses. It introduces some cool ideas like character upgrades, but then it does nothing with them. I mean, Shrek 2 was annoying at times, but at least it was engaging. Shrek 3 is just like uh, a nice walk in the park. It was just... Okay, I suppose. So anyway, what's the next Shrek game? Well, that's it, Goomba. We've done it. We have played every Shrek game for the Game Boy. How does it feel? Do you feel like your life's being changed? Yeah, I think it has, actually. I think I've developed Shrek PTSD. Cheers for that. 
But for the five people who are still watching, for the true hardcore Shrek fans, it's time to rank all the Shrek Game Boy games for one last final huzzah. Let's go! At the bottom, with number 9, we have Shrek Swamp Cart Speedway, the worst racing game I've ever played. At number 8, we have Shrek Fairy Tail Freakdown, probably the worst fighting game I've ever played. At number 7, we have Shrek 2, a beg for mercy. And at number 6, we got Shrek 3. Number 5 is Shrek Super Slam, and then at number 4 it's Shrek Hassle at the Castle. The Shrek 2 makes it into the top 3 spots, followed by Shrek Smash and Crash Racing. And the number 1 spot goes to Shrek Wreaking Havoc, a bit of a hidden gem if I do say so myself. And that's a wrap. Now get the hell out of my bush. Okay, okay, but I do need to plug my channel first. That's what YouTube collaborations are all about after all. Fine. Just make it quick. Well, if you haven't overdosed on Shrek videos yet, then head over to my channel where Goomba and I continue our collaboration and compare every version of Shrek 2. Wait a minute, I didn't agree to this. Oh shit, I'm already here. Uh, how did that happen? God damn it. Well, time for more Shrek games, I guess. It, it just never ends, does it? Either way, you might as well check it out. And the patron of the week is Richard Playstuff. But does he play Shrek? I don't know. Do you think he plays Shrek? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> 